He's been away for a while. He's moved over a thousand miles from home. Now, in the sunny state of Florida, a man rises from the shadows to bring you a higher class of movie reviews. His name is Andrew Cavanaugh, and this is Cavanaugh's Corner. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Cavanaugh's Corner. I wanted to say thank you uh, for coming back to us. Uh, some new updates I want to tell you about. We're trying a kind of a different atmosphere this week. Um, something uh, a little different than our usual corner setup. Um, I'm figuring we can change up the location every now and then. I figured we got you here in my uh, my little couch area here. Figured a little more laid back. Of course, still staying fancy, but uh, a little more laid back than normal. This week is going to be a little bit different. Um, normally, I like to bring to you a review. Uh, but because of the timing and the release of uh, my videos versus the release of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, uh, I'm going to be actually showing you two videos this week. Uh, one uh, tonight, and there's going to be another one in a few days with the review uh, for Batman v Superman, which I'm very excited about. Um, actually, the one thing I'm most excited about is the fact that uh, we get to see not only is it a new Superman movie, which uh, we haven't actually had a direct sequel to a Superman movie in a long time, uh, but also we get uh, we get a new Batman with Ben Affleck. And uh, as you can see, I have the uh, Affleck stubble going, uh, which I was very glad to see Batman finally have some kind of stubble um, in a movie, which uh, hasn't happened in a long time. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting film. Some of the early reviews have been a little uh, a little harsh on it, so I'm waiting to see what uh, what my personal opinion is before I uh, jump the gun. Um, but so far, it looks kind of interesting. But anyway, this week um, our main episode of Kavanaugh's Corner, like I said, that other review will be coming uh, within the next couple days. Um, I want to talk to you about my favorite. Uh, superhero movies uh, of all time. And I also want to talk to you about what I consider to be the worst uh, superhero movies of all time. I had to narrow it down to about five and five, uh, so this video wouldn't drag on, I should say. Um, five good, five bad, to kind of talk to you more about what I consider to be the uh, the best and the worst of the uh, of, you know, the whole spectrum of superhero movies. Because there have been a lot of them over the years. There's been a ton of superhero movies over the years. And I think um, I think it's time that I kind of share with you my favorites and also what I consider to be the, uh, the worst movies of all time. So, um, here we go. Alright, so we're going to start with the good first. We're going to start with what I consider to be the best uh, superhero movies. Um, and why don't we start right here. I got them actually. I got them next to me here. Because uh, I own, actually, all the movies we're going to talk about today. So, um, First and foremost, this is kind of the movie to me that um, when I think of superhero movies, um, this is the one for me that I always go back to. And it's not everybody's favorite. Um, it's not everybody's favorite movie, but to me, it's... Uh, it, it, it's definitely, if I had to pick like a single favorite uh, superhero movie, this is it for me. Um, it holds a very special place in my heart, and that's the, uh, the 1989 uh, Batman uh, with uh, Tim Burton directing, uh, starring Jack Nicholson, Michael Keaton, and uh, Kim Basinger. And, uh, and there they are right there. This is, this is a great little set, by the way. This is uh, a new re uh, release of... Uh, of this movie here, it actually has a, it's a two disc set, and it's just a great little uh, collector's item. Um, has a nice little documentary inside, along with a lot of other special features. And this is the uh, best looking the movie has ever been. This is an incredible, incredible work, and uh, just amazing. It's absolutely amazing uh, work of art. The movie could be called a work of art, really. Um, it ha does have some issues. Um, Again, not good, you know, I mean, for those of you that haven't seen this movie, I don't know where you've been, but I do want to say that, you know, the uh, the movie does have some plot problems, um, you know, changing uh, the aspect of Batman's, uh, you know, the killer of his parents has changed in this, uh, along with some other slip-ups that are actually mentioned in sequels, uh, but I think, 
the one thing that we can take away from this movie is that this was the movie that kind of showed Hollywood that you could make uh, a superhero movie that was indeed, um, you know, it was indeed a serious movie, not a uh, not a jokey kind of nutty. Uh, zany movie because before Batman was was this it was uh, uh, Adam West Batman and that was kind of not a uh, not a, a a very good adaptation of the classic Batman it's its own thing um, it's not bad it's just it's it's goofy on purpose and that's not what Batman was originally and this really uh, kind of narrowed it down and, and brought the spirit of the original character back. And also, I mean, just as an entertaining film, I mean, it's a great, I mean, it's a great action movie besides being a, uh, uh, an incredible, you know, uh, blockbuster. Uh, I mean, this movie made more money uh, than anything before it. This, this broke records. Or this is uh, the one that I always go back to, and it's definitely a... Uh, a great film, and if you don't have it on Blu-ray, it's on Netflix right now. If you haven't seen this movie, please watch it. Uh, Michael Keaton is just incredible as Bruce Wayne uh, slash Batman. Um, although he's not the most intimidating Batman, uh, to me, he's always going to be the original Batman to me. And uh, the movie is still very important, I think, uh, not only to film goers, but to also uh, lovers of the Batman character. I think this is a, a great film. So, anyway, moving on from that, uh, I couldn't go through this whole, you know, section here without talking about the original Superman movie. Um, this is the uh, Superman motion picture anthology, so this actually has all the uh, Superman movies in it, uh, even including, uh, you know, the not so good ones, uh, but it has every version. This is a great set to look for. Um, Superman the Motion Picture Anthology um, but the one on the list that I have to mention on that set is uh, the original um, the 1978 classic uh, directed by Richard Donner who is one of my favorite directors of all time uh, he did all the Lethal Weapon movies he did uh, you know obviously the original Superman and funny enough he also did uh, he was originally supposed to be the director of Superman 2 until he was released he was uh, he was actually released from the movie, or basically fired, um, and, he, and another director took over, Richard Lester uh, took over, and Richard Donner's cut is good, um, but I'm still partial to the uh, original Superman too. but the first Superman is the one that kind of started it all uh, in terms of superhero movies being taken seriously. Um, Batman kind of reestablished that like a couple years later down the road, but um, you know, the first Superman movie is the one that really showed people that you could make uh, a character fly on screen and actually people buy it. Um, actually, the tagline for the movie was very famously, you'll believe a man can fly. And you do. Uh, you really do. Christopher Reeve, um, who is one of my favorite actors of all time, uh, what a tragic story his life is. Um, but what a fabulous job he does in that movie. He is Superman. And for me, he will always be Superman. Uh, Henry Cavill is the only other uh, actor I can actually think of who's playing Superman now that actually does the role um, does the role justice. Uh, no pun intended there. Sorry, that's a terrible pun. But he actually uh, does does a great job in the role, and he looks like Superman. He looks like a much bulkier Superman. Um, don't get me wrong. Uh, Christopher Reeve was no lightweight, he was a very tall, very muscular guy, um, but uh, Henry now is, is kind of like the iconic, like big bulky Superman, which I'm cool with, he does a great job, um, he, has, he has the character down pat, it's great, uh, but Reeve to me is like the all-American hero, um, even in this movie, I mean Gene Hackman's performance is perfect. Uh, I mean, everybody in the movie is, is spot on. I mean, Marlon Brando, like at the beginning of the film, um, who would have thought he would have been so memorable in a role like that as, uh, as Jarrell? I mean, what, a, what an incredible opening. I mean, the whole movie is incredible, the scale of it. Um, even Man of Steel, which I actually enjoyed. I really enjoyed Man of Steel, but, um, which is basically just a retelling of that. It's basically what I, I like to call Man of Steel, Superman 1 and 2, the remake. That's all it is. It's both movies kind of 
can bind together. Um, but, you know, I gotta be honest. I mean, Superman, the original, I mean, on its own, it's a phenomenal film. I mean, the ending uh, does leave uh, some people disappointed because you don't really get a gigantic face-off with a bad guy like you do in a lot of these other movies, especially like in Batman where, you know, Batman actually faces the Joker. This one here, I mean, Lex Luthor, you know from the beginning, he doesn't stand a chance against Bat uh, against uh, Superman. But you're still uh, wanting something at the end of the movie, and I think that's one of the problems with the way they made the movie. It was actually supposed to be this epic, and instead they realize, you know, they have to split the movie in half, and the big face-off you were supposed to get at the end of number one actually happens in number two. So, eh, not that satisfying of an ending. I still enjoy it, but the movie as a whole uh, is just one of the best tellings of the Superman origin story, and I still think it's, it's uh, one of, or if not, the best superhero movie ever made. Awesome. Also, the director's cut of uh, super, uh, the original Superman movie, there's like an extended version that adds a lot to the story. It's not a short film. I mean, you're going on close to two and a half. I think it's like almost three hours long. It's a long, long version of the movie. Um, but it's definitely worth seeing if you can find that version. It's also, I think that's in this set here. So definitely worth picking up. Um, next on my list uh, is actually another phenomenal, uh, phenomenal action movie, but also uh, kind of one of those rare instances where the sequel of a movie is actually better than the original, and that's uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2. Um, I don't have Spider-Man 2 with me right now, it's actually being borrowed by a friend, um, but uh, Spider-Man 2 is uh, one of the best, I think it's actually the best Spider-Man movie ever made as of right now. Um, we know there's another Spider-Man movie in the works so at some point going to come out, um, now being handled by Marvel. Thank you. Um, but basically, uh, Spider-Man 2 is just Spider-Man dealing with life, uh, his relationships, the hardships of dealing with, uh, with being a, a superhero, and also fighting a new adversary with uh, Doc Ock or Dr. Octopus. Um, and again, another great film uh, really gets uh, Spider-Man, uh, gets the character. It, it, the movie is not only, it's non-stop, it's an emotional roller coaster. I just watched this a few weeks ago, and I gotta say, it's not an easy movie to get through, actually. Uh, Spider-Man kind of, you know, has a rough, time in this movie. Um, not only, not only, you know, physically speaking, gets the crap beat out of him, but, I mean, emotionally, I mean, you know, he has to deal with, uh, with Mary Jane, uh, and not being successful enough, you know, in the eyes of Mary Jane, fighting for her love, uh, fighting to be, you know, a, a better person, uh, and also balancing his life, uh, as Peter Parker, and also his life as Spider-Man. Um, not an easy thing, uh, as the movie shows, but uh, also has just a, a, a phenomenal ending. Um, just one, I think actually one of the best endings to a superhero movie ever, because um, it leaves you, not only does it leave you wanting more, but it also makes you wonder, oh, is this going to work out in the long run? You know, you don't know. Um, but again, I think it's the best Spider-Man movie ever made. Um, I also think the, perfor the performances in the movie, all, along with the direction by Sam Raimi, are basically, you know, perfect, spot on. Um, that's one thing all these movies have in common, is that the, uh, the acting in all of these movies I'm going to talk about today, except for the, the bad ones, the bad ones are bad, purposefully, um, but the uh, performances in all these movies are literally just incredible. Um, Tobey Maguire is, you can see every emotion he goes through, you can see it in his eyes in every scene. Um, you know, just full on, like, he's, he's got it at this point, he's nailed that role. And uh, something we never got with Andrew Garfield in the, uh, the newer, the newest Spider-Man movies. Um, I don't think enough time was spent uh, dealing with the character's inner psyche. Which is just, you know, it's too bad because I think that's where most of Spider-Man's uh, character lies is in, is in his psyche. And uh, I, think, I think it's a shame that some of these newer movies have, didn't deal with that, which is too bad. Uh, Spider-Man 2, best of the series, uh, best of that character, I think, and also uh, just a, a great entertaining movie. Um, awesome blockbuster. 
And again, you know, just it's just a very rewarding film. If you like the character, uh, you'll love the movie. If you don't like the character, you'll still love the movie. It doesn't matter um, as long as you're uh, you're buckled in. Uh, you're going to enjoy the ride, is what I like to say for that one. So that's a great film. Um, next on my list is uh, definitely one that uh, it's funny because I've noticed some people really enjoy this movie, some people don't. Um, most people seem to enjoy it but have some problems with it because it's kind of an earlier film in the franchise. Um, but to me, it's, it's, it's the almost like the Batman 89 of this generation in my mind. And that's the, uh, the first Iron Man, um, this uh, Iron Man, the original one with, uh, with uh, Robert Downey Jr. Um, again, directed by Jon Favreau, who would have thought he would have made a, a great... Uh, action movie, comic book uh, movie director, and this is kind of the one that started it all with the uh, the Marvel superhero uh, franchise. Um, before this, you know, you had Spider Man, the one like I just mentioned, the Spider Man franchise. You know, you had X Men, um, and they were all kind of disjointed. Um, they didn't really exist in the same universe. And what this movie uh, did, and what it started with, which is uh, venerable, is the fact that this movie kind of started the whole idea that there could be this one big universe where all these superheroes can intertwine and it coexist. And that is just, it is totally genius. It's totally genius. Um, without that, you would not have the mega blockbuster success of Avengers. Avengers Age of Ultron, the the two sequels to this Iron Man series, uh, the two, you know, Captain America movies, the two Thor movies. I mean, who would have thought we would have gotten a live-action Thor movie 20 years ago? It's crazy. Um, and now Ant-Man. I mean, Ant-Man. That, that's a thing. Ant-Man. I mean, that was a hit, you know? Not a big hit, but uh, hit enough, you know? Um, Again, who would have thought that this would have been coming together? And then in a few weeks, we got uh, Civil War, um, where we get to see Iron Man, we get to see Iron Man and Captain America duke it out. Um, I mean, uh, who would have thought this would be this would have become a reality? And it's basically this movie's fault. Um, it's all this movie's fault, and I'm so glad they made this. Um, not only is it a great origin story of the character, but it's also you know an interesting look at how superheroes come about, and it's a great character study. I mean, oddly enough, I mean, all these movies are basically character studies, but this one especially, um, it's amazing because at this point, you're gonna go back a few years with me, but when this movie came out, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. was not a big name. Um, he, you know, you knew who he was, but he was that guy that was the drug addict in Hollywood. And, I mean, today now it's like, oh, shit, you know, it's Robert Downey Jr., his biggest star in the world. But, like, when this movie came out, we didn't know what to expect from that. Um, it was not a, it was not going to be this huge ordeal. I mean, people were happy, like geeks like me who loved the Iron Man comic, was very glad it was coming out. But they didn't know what to expect from it. And then at the very end... Uh, when Sam Jackson comes out of nowhere as Nick Fury, and he says, I'd like to talk to you about the Avengers Initiative. It's like, uh... Everybody in the movie theater just, like, shut down. Everybody that knew what the Avengers were just kind of went, uh... We were stuck. We were, like, we were like fried. Like, our brains were, like, blown out of our ears at that point um, because we realized, oh, my God, like, this is going to become a bigger thing, and it's good. It's not going to suck. Um, and it hasn't, like, I, I gotta be honest with you, the only Marvel superhero movie uh, of the franchise that I have not enjoyed was the first Thor movie. Um, that was it. Uh, I saw it in theaters, I wasn't really enthused by it. Um, I like to refer to the first Thor movie as, like, the, pre the prelude to the Avengers, um, because that's the movie that kind of finally ties everything together, but, um... In the end, to me, it just, I don't know, like, I just, I, I don't know, I didn't really get a kick out of that movie. Um, it felt kind of bland and, and passe to me, whereas this was like a kick in the teeth. This was a movie I was like, hell yeah, like, the action, spectacular. Robert Downey Jr. is, is I'm going to swear right now, so cover your ears, you're like, he's fucking perfect in this movie. 
I mean, this is called absolutely pitch perfect casting. I mean, Michael Keaton as Batman, eh, we didn't know what to think. He ended up being great. You know, Christopher Reeve, relatively unknown as Superman, ended up being iconic. This, absolutely goddamn spot on perfect. Um, everybody in the movie, the only person to me that kind of fell short, um, oddly enough, was, uh, was Jeff Bridges. Um, and I love Jeff Bridges. And he was really the only part of this movie that I, I was kind of like, yeah, like yeah, you could have switched him out with almost any actor in my mind, and he would have done. He would have been the same, you know. Um, but my thing is, is that I love Jeff Bridges. I love him. Um, he's one of my favorite actors, and so him being in this movie to me is just a plus one. Um, it just makes it even more entertaining to me because I love him, and also him minus hair is actually kind of an interesting sight. So just that is is you know worth it alone. So kind of cool. Um, but anyway, you know, again, pitch perfect, everything about it, action, spectacular. Uh, the number one thing I love about this movie is that the CG in it is basically, um, you can't tell what's CG and what's not. And I think that's the way movies should be made. And not all the Marvel movies follow that. You can kind of tell a lot of them now. Uh, you can kind of tell that, you know, when the CG kicks in, it's definitely CG. This one here, it was so photorealistic, even still to, to today that you buy into the movie. You buy that Robert Downey Jr. is in this, you know, in this, uh, this mechanized war suit and he's, he's incredible. Like, you buy him in the suit, out of the suit. He's, uh, he's the man and I hope we get many more movies with Robert Downey Jr. as, as, uh, as the Iron Man. I, I think he's incredible and I think he is uh, the only person that can ever play Tony Stark. Um, he's it. He's the one and only. Nobody else. Uh, don't ever, don't ever stop being Tony Stark, man. You'll always be Tony Stark to me, uh, uh, RDJ. We love you, man. We love you. Um, but anyway, uh, next on my list, we got to move on. I could talk about this movie all day, but we got to move on. Um, last on my list, uh, definitely not least. Uh, in terms of uh, incredible superhero movies, I'm kind of cheating here because I already did one Batman movie, but I got to talk about The Dark Knight. Um, this is actually the the uh, somewhat new collector's edition of the Dark Knight trilogy. This is all of the movies right here, but the one I'm referring to is the uh, the second film in the Dark Knight trilogy, uh, just entitled The Dark Knight. Um, I will never forget when this movie came out. Uh, that was, in, of all the movies I've ever seen, I saw it twice in the theaters. Uh, once in IMAX, once in the regular theater. Um, never have I seen a film get reacted to in the way that it did um, when I first saw that film. Uh, when I first saw Dark Knight, when it came out. Uh, I remember sitting in the IMAX theater thinking, holy crap, uh, this is this is what I've been waiting for for Batman. Um, basically, up until that point, you know, Batman Begins was a was a great movie. Um, uh, it was a very interesting take on Batman. But when this came out, we didn't know what to expect. We had uh, a guy playing the Joker that was reasonably, you know, a, a very good actor, but also uh, playing a part that was once, you know, iconically played by Jack Nicholson. And for many people, you know, even to this day, Jack Nicholson is the uh, is you know the one and only Joker. But to me, um, I, I love Jack Nicholson's portrayal in that film. Uh, but the Dark Knight is the one that that does it right for that character. Um, he is a total psychopath. He is funny um, and appealing in a way, but he is nasty enough where you cannot um, you could not ever root for him. Um, and you also feel like Batman has actually met his match in this movie. Um, you know, it, Heath Ledger's performance in The Dark Knight is just, uh, it's one of a kind. And honestly, I, I don't know if anybody's going to be able to do better than that. Um, I know Jared Leto is playing the Joker in the upcoming Suicide Squad. Again, uh, I'd, I'm going to reserve judgment until it comes out because Jared Leto is another phenomenal actor. Um, he knows what he's doing, but um, Heath Ledger's uh, Joker is basically of its own kind. Um, 
uh, it's genius in every way uh, through the voice, through his mannerisms. I mean, you could go on and on for days about his his performance in that movie. Um, I mean, he it is what it is. It's it's just it's a spot on. It's a spot on perfect performance. Um, Heath, I mean, yeah, even the other actors besides Heath in that movie. I mean, you know, Christian Bale. Uh, I mean, everybody in the movie is 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 amazing. Um, you know, Christopher Nolan. Uh, directing that, also utilizing IMAX, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I saw in the IMAX theater, uh, but uh, utilizing IMAX cameras, uh, again pushing the limits for what you know what can be done with a superhero movie, um, just making it so big, you're literally in awe of it. It makes it like this incredible. Uh, just amazing kind of uh, just I, I mean it's, it's like a showcase it's just it's just mind-blowing um, I, I just oh, I love it I love I love everything about the movie um, it's a ride I mean it's not a short movie either but it never feels long it never feels like it drags on for too long um, it also is one of these movies where the more you watch it, the more you, I, I, I can't, I don't know. It's like the more you watch the movie, the more you actually, you care about it. It's, it's, a, it's a movie that stays with you. And even like The Dark Knight Rises, which is the next film in the franchise, this one, you know, Dark Knight had such a, I don't want to say like such a solid, uh, story to it that you know the next one was kind of all over the place in terms of its plot um, you know I it just it's it's just it's it's of its time period it's oh man you know it, it's just one of those movies where I, I try to think of things that are 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 bad about it and it, it's hard for me to think of anything um, and I think that's what makes the movie so great is that it, when you get down to it, there is really not much about the movie you can nitpick. Um, there are some things I can nitpick about Dark Knight Rises. There are some things I can nitpick about Batman Begins. Um, but Dark Knight, it, to me, you know, it's just, it's one of those movies where it rolls on and you just hang on. Because uh, it's just, it's so, uh, it's just so... Mm, I don't know. It, it's got like a guttural kind of punch to it. Uh, it's I don't know. It's just a it's just a perfect movie. It's just a perfect superhero movie. And uh, you know whatever Christopher Nolan is up to next, uh, Interstellar was an incredible film too. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what he does next uh, after he's moved. Now that he's moved on, kind of completely from the uh, Batman franchise, it'll be neat to see what he does next. So. Um, but anyway, that's that's it for what I like to call my favorite uh, superhero movies of all time. Now we're going to have some fun and talk about the real bad ones. Uh, the real garbage, as I like to call it. Um, and I, I'd like to start with one movie that, I, I mean, it's been ridiculed so much already that um, I'm, I'm not even going to spend a lot of time on it because everybody has picked on this movie in one way or another. Um, and that is Batman and Robin. Uh, Batman and Robin is kind of like the iconic piece of shit, um, you know, superhero movie. Now everybody's done one of these movie movie reviews where they, you know, where they, uh, you know, uh, they kind of like, you know, they they shit all over it and stuff. And it's it's not a good movie. Um, you know, the the every, you know. Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze, you know, saying some kind of pun every five seconds. The Bat credit card. I mean, there's a lot of unforgivable garbage in that movie. Um, the one thing you can say about the movie is that it is pretty to look at. Uh, that's about it. There is nothing else in that movie that I would say is redeeming. Um, the story is garbage. Uh, the plot is, is threadbare. Um, there is no payoff to the end of the film. There is nothing learned at the end of the film. There is nothing that happens in the movie that changes any of the characters. The characters go through no growth whatsoever. Um, unlike the other movies I mentioned earlier where all the characters somewhat evolve during the film or by the end of the film. 
Um, Batman and Robin, nothing happens. It's still a lot of, lot of noise, uh, a lot of pretty pictures. Uh, Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy is, is just eating up the scenery along with Arnold. Basically, everybody in the movie is just chewing it up. But um, uh, other than that, it's, 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 it's crap. It's total crap. It killed the Batman series up until Batman Begins. Um, now, thankfully, they, you know, uh, directors and, you know, producers have become wise what not to do with Batman. Um, that's kind of like the iconic, like, what not to do with Batman. I think the one thing that we all can be thankful of is that George Clooney's career didn't end with that movie. Because um, there's one or two more movies I'm going to talk about that ended people's careers very fairly quickly. Um, we're going to talk about those in a minute. But uh, next on my list uh, is kind of funny because I had... Uh, another movie of this of this series, my last, uh, the, just a few minutes ago, I talked about it, and that's Superman three. Um, you may be thinking, why is you know Superman three on this list? And that's because um, it is my least favorite Superman movie ever made. Um, it is just not. Uh, it's I don't know. It's it's not a movie that is entertaining to me in any way. Um, it's it's one of those like pointless sequel movies that um, I just I can't stand, uh, and I've seen it multiple times. I actually enjoyed the movie when I was a kid because I'd laugh at it because I thought it was funny, and now I watch it and it doesn't even really seem like a Superman movie. It seems like some other movie that they had a plot for, and they kind of cut Superman into it. It's like they almost like they edited his parts into it. Um, Richard Pryor in this movie, who I love, um, one of the greatest comedians of our time, absolutely hilarious in most of his work. This movie, he is totally useless. Um, he does nothing in the movie funny. Um, he gets drunk in one scene, which I think is, I guess, marginally funny. But mainly, it was almost like we got to put Richard Pryor in this movie so we can get some sort of comic relief. Um, other than that, I mean, the plot of this movie is basically like Superman is trying to go on vacation. Um, Superman basically goes back to Smallville um, after Lois goes on vacation at the beginning of the movie because Margot Kidder said she didn't want to be in this one. So they were just like, okay by um, and so they changed the plot so he's actually uh, going back to Smallville and, and meets uh, an old flame of his and in the end it's just it's it's one of these movies where it's like why does this exist uh, the plot goes so all over the place it's like they you know the the bad guys are creating a computer the computer goes crazy at the end starts killing people and becomes self-aware um, it's really stupid. Uh, it's just a really stupid movie. Um, the only part of the movie that I find actually entertaining is that there's a part kind of like midway through the movie where Superman basically splits in two and becomes like bad Superman and like like good part of the good part of Superman has to fight like bad Superman. And it's not bizarro, it's literally like bad Superman, like his, his like, he becomes like dirty and he doesn't shave. It's really kind of, kind of a stupid subplot, um, but it's, it's really, it's a really pointless movie. And even Christopher Reeve knew it, knew that when they were making the movie. Um, and he never really enjoyed the film, but uh, it made money. Surprisingly, it was very badly uh, handled by critics, but the movie still made money. Um, so that kind of gave him a reason to make Superman 4 a few years after that. Um, but we all know about Superman 4, and no, Superman 4 is not on this list. Um, because I actually find Superman 4 to be slightly better than 3. And I know you guys are going to kill me when I say something like that. But it's true, I actually do find Superman uh, 4 to be slightly more redeeming than 3, because it actually seems like a Superman movie. Whereas uh, Superman 3 kind of feels like some other movie with Superman in it. Um, and that's just my opinion, so that's just me. Um, next on my list is a movie that I actually think I mentioned in one of the, the other videos I've done in the past. Um, but it's a movie that, again, some people I know enjoy it, 
and a lot of people I know don't, um, and that's Punisher Warzone. Um, Punisher Warzone came out, I want to say, it's three or four years after the original Punisher with Thomas Jane. And uh, Warzone is kind of another one of these movies. It's just like, what the hell were they thinking when they were making this movie? Um, it really is one of these movies where it's nasty for the sake of being nasty. Um, I guess some people just did not think that the original, uh, the original uh, Punisher was uh, violent enough. Um, and the original Punisher is a pretty nasty movie. I mean, you know, a uh, guy's wife and kids gets run over by a truck um, and after being shot at. You know, it's kind of, it's pretty violent. But I guess it just wasn't enough for most people. Um, and they said, well, we're going to make a Punisher movie that's just, just flat out just disgusting. And it is. It's disgusting. It's almost like if they did like a Saw movie, like one of the Saw movies, uh, or like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie with like... Uh, the Punisher. Uh, I'm just, I'm not even going to go into the performances in the movie. I'm just going to say that the uh, the movie is uh, very much all about torturing people. Um, goes way beyond um, what most action movies do in terms of torture. I mean, you got a guy that's, you know, being killed in a machine that's like crushing glass and he's being cut apart and like mangled and stuff by this machine it's just it's and he's swearing at the same time was gargling blood and spitting up blood and and like puss and sh it's just it's just it's just nasty it's a fucking nasty movie um movie was so gross that um i actually got i didn't go see it in theaters because oh, so many people told me not to bother with it but um when it came out uh and it was on video i actually went and bought it um, I sat through 20 minutes of the movie. I actually had to stop it and go back to it later, like a few days later, um, because I could not watch it. Uh, I could not get through it. I had eaten beforehand, and I was literally getting sick to my stomach watching the movie. I had to stop it and uh, continue it uh, at a later point, and then I promptly traded in the movie um, <laughs> after after watching it, because I knew I would never watch it again, uh, nor would I ever feel the need to watch it, because I am not a sadomasochist. Um, it is not a not a redeeming film. Uh, it does nothing about the character of Frank Castle. Uh, Frank Castle in that movie is a, a cardboard cutout in which he lives to uh, to mangle and murder people. And don't get me wrong, that is part of his character, but none of his damaged psyche is explored at all in that movie. His uh, sad uh, backstory is basically glossed over, and it's just a it's a uh, it's a wasted wasted opportunity. Thankfully, now that uh, the Punisher is on the Daredevil Netflix series, they're kind of doing that uh, character uh, justice again. No pun intended, but they are giving that character his. Uh, his uh, his day in the sun, and it is a good day. So if you get a chance, watch the uh, Daredevil uh, series on Netflix. You will not regret it. Again, a violent show, not violent violent to the point where you are going to throw up. Um, but again, a violent show, very much uh, a good adaptation of those characters, though. So good job, Netflix. Bad job, um, Punisher Warzone. Uh, next on my list is another uh, wasted opportunity, which thankfully they have since uh, fixed with uh, two or three other uh, uh, renditions of the character, um, and that's Hulk. Um, that's not Incredible Hulk, uh, Ang Lee's Hulk. Uh, again, a uh, very, very bad movie. Um, Again, another movie that basically single-handedly tanked the career of its star, uh, uh, Eric Bana. Um, yeah, just this is not a good film. Um, actually, kind of a funny story. Uh, Hulk is a movie where um, I remember being in, actually, I was in California when the movie was released in Universal Studios. Uh, actually was staying uh, on a resort in Universal Studios in California with my mom. Uh, the Probably the best vacation I ever had in my life. Incredible time. Um, they had a lot of advertisements for this movie around. Uh, there was no one going to see this movie. <laughs> there was no one going to see this movie um, when it came out. Uh, there was big Hulk advertisements and the theaters were empty. Um, <laughs> 
my mom and I actually uh, got to rent the movie in our uh, hotel room um, in at Universal, and uh, we we paid a pretty penny to see it in our hotel room on our uh, our widescreen TV, which is. Uh, uh, really wild back then. Having a widescreen TV was not the norm, um, but uh, we fell asleep. Uh, we fell asleep. We paid like forty bucks to see this movie in our hotel room because we were living it up. We were in LA. Might as well live it up. And uh, we both fell asleep about midway through the movie. Um, after the first or fortieth dream sequence that happens, or flashback, or whatever the hell is going on in this movie. Um, yeah, just we we were done with it, and we actually ended up falling asleep. No joke, we we conked out, um, missed the whole movie. The movie had ended, and uh, if any of you guys have rented a current release movie in a uh, in a hotel before, you know that you see you get to see the movie one time, and one time only. So we spent forty dollars uh, to fall asleep. But I tell you, if you need to conk out, this movie's better than Nyquil. Um, it will put you to sleep so fast. Uh, it is a boring action movie, which is, I, I don't even know what that is. Um, that's definitely some kind of conundrum there, but, um, the oxymoron of the century, but this is everything that a comic book movie should not be. Um, Ang Lee really took the whole aspect of, uh, being a comic book adaptation to a whole new level where he even has comic strip like transitions where you actually see like a comic strip and it goes from one comic box to like the next, like one cell to the next cell. And it couldn't make the movie any less interesting. Uh, the Hulk looks like a, like a giant green like ball of gelatin and he jumps around like, like a super ball in this movie. Like he's supposed to weigh like like a thousand tons or something, and he's jumping in this movie like Spider-Man jumps in all of his movies, like boing, 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 like bounces around. It's like I, I don't even understand the physics there. It's like they didn't have, they didn't even bother trying to figure that out. Thankfully, um, with the other uh, Incredible Hulk movies, um, especially the uh, the one that followed this, uh, which was part of the whole Marvel uh, universe. Um, with Ed Norton, which uh, he did a, a great job. Um, I, I I don't think that they'll ever make the mistakes that this movie made ever again, thankfully. Um, and also, uh, now that we have uh, uh, another uh, incantation of the... Uh, 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 we have another version of the Hulk in uh, the Avengers films, um, I think that... Uh, with Ruffalo in the part uh, now in the, the newer versions, uh, I don't think they're ever going to make the mistakes that they made in in this Hulk. So, in a way, we have this movie to thank for uh, uh, knowing how to do the Hulk badly. Um, but still, this was a uh, a massive, massive disappointment because I know a lot of people, including myself, were very excited for this movie when it came out. And then when I started telling my friends that the movie was a, uh, a horrible waste of time, um, their you know hopes were dashed. So now at least we have a Hulk that is actually entertaining. Um, he always kind of plays second fiddle, which is too bad, but at least the uh, Hulk now is not a uh, disaster like he was in this movie. Um, God, what a horrible movie. Uh, I think the only thing that's actually decent about this film is Nick Nolte's part. Uh, Sam Elliott in this in this movie too also kind of gives a uh, a somewhat you know decent performance, but everybody in the movie is just wasted. It's just a wasted, wasted, uh, just a waste of time and talent. This what a shame, what a total shame. Uh, but anyway, um, last uh, on my list, uh, but definitely least, uh, most definitely least. Um, I had to really think of a movie that was uh, really bad. And I mean, really bad. Um, I mean, I've listed some bad ones within the last couple minutes, but this one here kind of takes the cake. And uh, again, I remember seeing billboards for this movie around the same time that The Hulk came out. Um, they were all over California. Um, and even when we saw these ads for this movie, uh, we knew we were getting a piece of shit. Um, we all knew we were getting a massive piece of garbage. 
Um, and honestly, you may not even be able to call it a superhero movie. Uh, I actually had a hard time picking this one because uh, it, it may not even be a superhero movie. I mean, it's trying to be a superhero movie, but not really. Um, it's 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 a mess. It's just a total mess, and it's another movie that almost killed the career of the uh, the main actress, and did kill the career of the uh, of the other actress in this in this movie. Um, now what the hell? I'm just gonna show it to you. Yeah, it's Catwoman with uh, Halle Berry. Um, this is a uh, this is a monumental disaster. Uh, this movie is. Um, Honestly, I, 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 I don't know where they were going with this movie. Um, uh, they basically, I, I don't know, a bunch of people got together in a room and said, uh, we got to make a superhero movie with a woman um, that is um, sexy but also accessible and let's make it so it's just the dumbest thing you've ever seen, um, and that's what Catwoman is. Um, Catwoman is a uh, just a just a just a total mess. Um, uh, first and foremost, I think the the major crime with this movie is that um, this movie has absolutely nothing to do um, with the Catwoman of the comics. Um, I mean, nothing to do with the Catwoman of the comics. I think the only thing that connects this movie from the Catwoman of the comics, um, and the, uh, uh, you know, the Catwoman of this film is the fact that, that the name of it is Catwoman, and she's kind of a thief, um, I guess. She's kind of like a sleuthy thief, I don't know, um, but yeah, this movie's a, a, a nightmare. Um, first of all, Catwoman is a totally other like Catwoman's like alter ego is is a character named Phillips in this film. Uh, I actually give me a second. I don't remember the name. Patience Phillips. Uh, we don't know what happened to Selena Kyle. Um, she's obviously not in this. Um, but. It is it's a it's a mess. It's a total mess. Um, you know, Sharon Stone's career uh, ended with this one. Um, she has been in a few different things. She's actually on a TV show now. I cannot recall the name. Um, I think it's on TNT. Basically, the whole purpose of the film is to get uh, a face-off between Halle Berry and Sharon Stone, put them in a room together so they can fight and casually kind of tear each other's clothes apart. Um, and the worst part is this movie's PG-13, um, and there's nothing in it uh, that is even in the least bit kind of like entertaining. Um, the story is totally useless. Um, it has something to do with a, uh, an anti-aging cream that's like actually going to harm people, and uh, it's, it's just a mess. It's just a total mess. Um, but, you know, it's like, uh, Halle Berry gets killed, and then she comes back to life because of cats. Um, mystical cats. Magical cats. I, I don't know. I don't know. I give up. I can't talk about this movie anymore. It's so bad. You know, the worst part is, is that I own this movie. I physically own this movie. Oh, I mean, I own this movie because I I will I will whip this movie out every now and then, um, so I can watch it and laugh at it. Um, that's the only reason why I own this movie. Um, I mean, it's it's just it's a disgrace. I mean, everybody in this movie is just is just at the. I mean, this is like the low end of the totem pole in terms of like any kind of comic book movie in my mind. I mean, like, I mean, not only does it have nothing to do with the Catwoman character, but it also basically has nothing to do with, with like, comic book movies in general. Like, it's, you couldn't even, you could actually just not call this a comic book movie and you'd be fine. Um, you could, you could actually take the name Catwoman out of this movie, um, and switch it to, like, um, I mean, anything, and it would have the same connection that it does to Catwoman in this movie. Um, but anyway, this is a piece of junk, and uh, don't watch it.
uh, please, only watch it. I can say this, only watch it if you want to laugh at it. Because there are some scenes in that movie that are genuinely funny for all the wrong reasons. Um, you know, Benjamin Bratt is in that movie, who I actually like as an actor, who is actually very underrated. And again, um, I mean, he's useless in that movie. He's totally useless in that movie. Everybody's useless in that movie. And uh, I need a Tylenol now because I've been talking about shitty comic book movies for the past 20 minutes. But anyway, um, I want to say thank you for coming back to Kavanaugh's Corner. I appreciate you having you here. Um, also, uh, something new since the last time that we talked. Um, I have a website now on Patreon. Uh, it's actually patreon.com slash Kavanaugh's Corner. Um, I'm going to put that in my uh, end credits here. Um, where you can actually not only uh, donate to the show, uh, to me, so we can get, um, you know, uh, fancier sets and uh, do more uh, intense things with this show, but also uh, you can watch all my videos on there too in case uh, you want a single place, you don't want to search through YouTube or whatever, you don't want to deal with YouTube for whatever reason. All my videos go up on that website around the same time they go on here. Um, so definitely check it out. Um, also, uh, definitely check out all the other uh, features on redbeardpodcast.com with my, uh, my buddies, the two Tonys over there, Tony Amaral, Tony Cooley. Um, definitely check uh, their show out. Their podcasts are always great. Um, but until next time, I want to say thank you for tuning in to, uh, to uh, Kavanaugh's Corner. Um, and as, I, as always, uh, keep reaching for the stars and uh, so will I. Uh, again, thank you. We love you. Good night.